we the go. first time in 2017. It's true. Hit that air raid signer. It's time for Monday Morning Fallout. Monday Morning Fallout, of course, when we overreact to everything from the football weekend. And, oh, I wonder if there are a few things to talk about. I wonder. Let's start with my three big thoughts. First yeah. big thought, bad, worse, worst. Yeah. All due respect to teams like SMU and TCU and Texas Tech. Uh, and who else am I uh, I'm forgetting? North Texas. Sure. Right? Uh, teams that had relatively ho-hum, if not dominating, performances in week one. But this weekend will be remembered for three games and three games exactly. Oh, yeah. And in my opinion, they got progressively worse. Yeah. No, I think most of the internet would agree with you as well, based on my Twitter feed. Let's start with uh, Saturday morning. Okay. Texas, it's the debut of Tom Herman. Oh, here we go. Things start off white hot. Holton Hill gets a pick six, and you're thinking, Here we go. Here we go. It's Texas is back, folks. It's party time in Austin. Uh, then the rest of the game happened, and uh, Texas uh, loses to Maryland. Mm. 51 yeah. to 41. And there are a number of red flags. First and foremost is that uh, Maryland was 12 for 15 passing. Mm -hmm. Maybe make a play. And mm -hmm. one of those, by the way, was that interception. Right. So they only threw two incompletions. Right. They also averaged 6.1 yards per carry. Let's also not forget that Texas could not run the ball. No. Texas had 98 yards rushing. 98 yards rushing. Big red flags in Austin. Um, and I was thinking, man, what a terrible weekend for college football in Texas. Texas loses to Maryland. They were 18-point favorites. But, I mean, at least the worst is over. Right. Flash forward to that night. I will be entirely honest about Saturday night. And I even tweeted this. I intentionally ignored Liberty and Baylor. Right. Because, first why of all, you, I, why, why, I, was at a, I was at a wedding reception, right? right? There's no reason to pay attention to it. Like, why would I? No. Why would I pay attention to Liberty and Baylor? Baylor's going to roll. I'm, I, I want to go back and watch the game afterwards, I'm thinking, yeah. because I want to see what Baylor, what Baylor looked like, what their offense looked like under Matt Rule, the new... Um, and then, literally, I was laying down in bed to go to, to go to sleep on Saturday night, and I was like, oh, I'll go one last thro scroll through Twitter. Who? What? <laughs> Liberty 48, Baylor 45, in maybe the worst loss for Baylor in a decade. Um, they give up 585 yards of total offense to Liberty. Now, Liberty is not a bad FCS team, but they're still an FCS team. Yep. And it was terrible. It was bad. Terrible for Baylor. Just complete, complete. And there's just not a lot to take from this that you feel good about. Terrence Williams got banged up. Jim Michael Hasty got banged up. Uh, the defense got shredded. Mm -hmm. They went. Liberty went 15 for 24 on third down. Oy. This in any other week, this would be undisputedly the worst loss of the weekend. And then Sunday happened. Uh, now, I want to be clear about something. Of the three teams, the uh, three opponents that we're talking about between um, Maryland, Liberty, and UCLA, I think UCLA is the best of the bunch. Oh, sure. This is also a team that um, they were on the road. Yeah. Texas A&M was on the road. And honestly, if you had come to me and you had said, right. hey, I'm from the future. Guess what? UCLA wins by one. You go. I'd go, that actually sounds about right. That sound, you know what? It, that's not the worst start. Not the worst that's start. The you worst know, A&M, that's not bad. Uh, you only lose by one. But the problem is that, um, is that um, you see, A&M uh, had a lead in this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't seven points. No. It wasn't like ten points. It was 34 points. Yeah. With under three minutes left in the third quarter, the score was Texas A&M 44, UCLA 10. And then 
the wheels didn't come off. The wheels came off and flew into a different time zone. <laughs> the biggest collapse I have ever seen in college football. It's pretty bad. And Texas A&M, in the span of 17 minutes, 18 minutes of game time, yep. went from what would have been a really nice start to 2017 yeah, seriously. to now I wonder where this team goes. Right. And the season may be over before it even starts. To a member of the Board of Regents ranting on Facebook about how someone has to go. Yep. I've got more thoughts about this. Um, we'll probably save that for Texas Football Today Extra for insiders. But I've got more thoughts about this and, 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 and the giant red flags I saw for A&M. Uh, for all three of these teams, really. But A&M especially. But that is the first thought. Is yeah. that. Two. Thought number two. A Texas high school football party. And was it ever... Friday night, Fox Sports Southwest put on football days in Texas. And if you didn't have a chance to, uh, to, to, to sit by your TV and watch it, you really missed out. First and foremost, um, the, the production value, I know for a fact that Fox Sports put a couple of million dollars into right. football days in Texas. Right. And it showed. Yeah. The production value was, awesome. was off the charts. It was, it was like an NFL broadcast. It was awesome. It was really, really cool. Uh, I, I'm glad that they gave Fox, uh, they gave high school football like this big platform to celebrate it in the in the big way. Um, you had the pregame show from Idaloo, then you had Idaloo and Shallowater, which was a, a pretty surprising result. I thought mm -hmm. I thought Shallowater just it wouldn't have surprised me if Shallowater had won, but the way they won was really impressive. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, and I'm not just saying this because he's a buddy of ours. Like <laughs> Ted Emmerich is un. Unbelievable. He killed it. He was amazing. He's so good. He was so if prepared, he, and, he it, was, and it showed. He was on the call with Shea Walker out there at Idaloo Shellwater, and that the, those two on the call was un... I got to watch like the first half of that before I had to run off. Yeah. Unbelievable. And then you had the Judson, uh, Judson Lake Travis game. The atmosphere was jumping there, DW yep. Rutledge Stadium. Um, I've got many thoughts on Judson. I thought that they were the fa one of the fastest high school teams I've ever seen. Yeah. I think Lake Travis will be fine. Yeah. I don't think they're particularly pleased about giving up 64 nope. points, but or 66 points, but I think that they're pleased. And, of course, high school school board live. It was a great weekend. So it was a big Texas high school football party, and welcome back. And thought number three, don't panic. But this is Monday morning fallout, Greg. Don't panic. If your team won in week one, cool. enjoy it. Yeah. Have fun. That's great. If your team looked great in week one, good. Cool. If your team didn't look great, or if your team lost, it's early. Take advantage of the idea of process over results, especially. Yeah. That if you take a look at the process instead of the results, there are teams that won that I didn't think looked particularly good. Yeah, I would agree. And there were teams that lost that I didn't think looked particularly bad. Right. But in any case, in week one, especially with high school football, focus on the process as opposed to the results. And in my mind, that is the most important thing. So if you look at our new rankings on TexasFootball.com, we focus it a lot more on process as opposed to results. Yeah. So, num number number three is don't panic. Three helmet stickers. Let's give a helmet sticker to Wortham running back in strong safety, Stefan Ester. 225 yards and three touchdowns rushing, plus defensively, nine tackles, three tackles for loss, and a forced fumble in the in Wortham's win over Itasca. Great win for them. How about North Texas running back Jeffrey Wilson, the pride of Elkhart? Yes. 12 carries. 176 yards and three touchdowns in their win, big win over Lamar. The North Texas offense looked midseason form. Watch out for North Texas. All right. And finally, Tyler Gorman wide receiver Isaiah Haggerty. Uh, another, you know, a year Off after. the Gorman wide receiver tree. Another, another guy uh, after Judah Bell goes yeah. nuts last year. How about Isaiah Haggerty? Nine catches, 284 yards and four touchdowns in their emphatic win over Garrison. Those are my three helmet stickers. Three teams to watch. How about Madisonville? Know, How about Old Rusty I Nail? Oh, yeah. 24 0 win over Teague. Very impressive. That is. That's an impressive win for Madisonville. Right Teague, there. Teague yeah. I know, has it has some pieces to replace. For sure. But that is a big time Solid eyebrow win. raiser. Yeah. Very good win for them. How about AM Commerce? In one of the weirder college football results of the weekend. And that's saying something. Right. An eight to seven win over number six North Alabama. I believe they're number yeah. three now in Division Two. Watch yeah. out for A and M Commerce. The Lions are maybe uh, a, a Texas's best chance at a national championship this year. 
Ooh, and finally, how about Brownsville Veterans Memorial? Okay, they take on uh, take on Edinburgh North, and in the second half they outscored them twenty nine to nothing to mm-hmm. to run out to a thirty nine twenty one win over Edinburgh North. Quarterback Gustavo Vasquez went nuts for them. Yeah. It's a fantastic win for Brownsville Vets, uh, a team to keep an eye on down there in the valley. And I believe they got a big game this weekend as well. So mm. uh, Brownsville Vets, a team to keep an eye on. Three teams to worry about. How about Gilmer. Here's a perfect example in my mind of uh, process over results. So Gilmer beat Texarkana Liberty Isla. Yep. And I want to give respect to Liberty Isla because DeCorian Phillips, their, their wide receiver, is really impressive. Yep. But they should not be giving up 58 points, was it? Sounds about right. Either 57, 57 or 58. 58 57? It was either 57, right. 50, 58, 57 or 59, 58. And Gilmer won. Right. And the bottom line, the name of the game is winning. But that is a red flag for me. Need that Gilmer defense to stiffen up over the course yeah. of the year because that offense will put up the points. It's pretty clear. Uh, another team to worry about, what about UTEP? Uh, nobody expected them to go up to Norman and beat them, but no. the fact that they were not able to run the ball with any sort of effectiveness and the secondary got torched yeah. by Baker Mayfield, uh, that does not bode well for uh, for the Miners. And finally, Wolfworth Friendship. Uh, holy cow. Yeah. Not a great debut uh, for for the Tigers as they go out to El Paso and get beat by El Paso or El Paso Montwood seventy to fourteen. Yeah. Um. Not good. Holy cow! That is uh that is not good. They uh, and and more importantly, they give up four hundred and seventy seven yards on the ground. Yeah. It's not good for no. friendship. Um. So uh, that is uh that is a team that I am officially worried about, and that is Monday morning fallout. 